Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on basic cloud concepts. Today we're going to be talking about cloud classifications, and then we will conclude with different types of cloud computing. There's a fair amount of information to cover, so let's go ahead and dive right in. I will begin our session with a discussion about cloud classifications. Cloud computing is where the resources on the network are not actually physical in nature. They are provided to the end user virtually. Cloud computing can lead to a very fluid and dynamic environment as the required resources are normally only provisioned or supplied as needed and are decommissioned or shut down once their use is done. Most often these virtual resources are not owned by the company or user that uses them, but are provided by a service provider. While cloud computing is highly configurable and changeable, it does have some basic structures that are used in the classification of the type of cloud that is in use. The first classification of cloud computing that we're going to talk about is the public cloud. This is where systems can interact with services and devices within the public cloud and on public networks, like over the internet and possibly with other public clouds. The public cloud is where the services that are provided are not just provided to a specific user, but are open for the public to purchase and use. Then there are private clouds. This is where systems only communicate with services and devices within a specific private cloud. A private cloud is essentially just that, private. The only users who have access to it are ones who are authorized to use it. The cloud classification can be hybrid. It can combine aspects of both the public and private clouds. And last up, there are community clouds. This is where cloud services are used by private individuals, organizations, or groups that have a common interest. Now let's move on to different types of cloud computing. Because of the nature of cloud computing, it is very configurable to the needs and desires of the purchaser of the cloud services. Purchasers have many options beyond the type of cloud services that they want to provision. They must also determine what type of service they are going to require, from the most basic of services to the most highly complex of services. The purchaser needs to have a plan going into cloud computing in order for it to be efficient and effective for them. So now let's move on to some of those services that cloud computing can offer. First up is software as a service. The end user purchases the rights to use an application or software without the need to configure the virtual servers that will deliver the application to them. It is usually delivered as a web app or web application opened and used from within a web browser, but not always. If you have a subscription to Microsoft's Office 365, you are utilizing software as a service. Then there is Platform as a Service, or PaaS. The user is provided with a development platform for the creation of software packages without the need to configure the virtual servers and the infrastructure that delivers it. You are essentially renting server or computing power in order to develop your software packages. PaaS is more complex than software as a service. And finally, we have infrastructure as a service. This is where the end user is provided with access to virtual servers, configurable by the customer, and other virtual network resources. Their infrastructure is actually virtually provided to them. This creates a highly configurable environment in which customers can create the resources and the performance that they require. The end user supplies the software that's going to be used on the IAAS network, or they purchase it as an additional software as a service service. 
As you could have guessed from that last statement, it's not uncommon for the type of cloud computing being utilized by an organization to be a mix. Some departments may rely upon and use infrastructure as a service, while the development team will only utilize a platform as a service service. Part of the advantage of cloud computing is that the purchaser only needs to initialize and pay for resources as they are needed. In a private cloud situation, it is possible for an organization that is using it to actually own the cloud resources. If they do own the cloud resources, they may have it on site or they may pay to have those resources hosted off site. That way they can offload the maintenance cost of maintaining those resources. Now that concludes this session on basic cloud concepts. I talked about different cloud classifications and then I concluded with a brief discussion on types of cloud computing. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another one.